Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Reeby, Principal of Vanderveer Elementary School. And I'm Dr. Tian, Superintendent of Schools. We are so excited to welcome everyone to our Vanderveer Evening Learning Academy. You are all in for weeks and weeks of enjoyment. You will be learning alongside your very own Vanderveer teachers. Also, we have teachers and administrators from across the district that will be bringing you fun learning experiences. You will become scientists, engineers, mathematicians, writers, world explorers, and learn to communicate in different languages as you explore concepts in math, reading, writing, science, social studies, world language, and so many more. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and we encourage you to visit often and view other lessons in our learning library as we add to the videos each week. Enjoy! Enjoy. Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight on our science lesson. Physical changes and chemical reactions are all around us. No matter where you go, they're happening. In your homes, in schools, outside, wherever you may go. So what are exactly physical changes and chemical reactions? What are some of your ideas? Okay, I'm hearing some really good answers out there. Well, I'm going to do a short demonstration to give some of you a little more time to think. And then I want you to look at this and you tell me whether you think this is a physical change or a chemical change. I have here in front of me two items, a glass with some ice in it and a bottle of soda, Pepsi. Some of you may prefer Coke. Some of you may prefer Pepsi. Some of you may prefer not to drink soda at all all which is fine. But th these two are the things that we're going to use right now. So I'm going to open up this Pepsi. And I'm going to pour it into this glass. What do you notice that's happening? Okay, heard some really good answers there too. You heard gurgling, you saw bubbles, and you saw the, I heard somebody say that they saw the frost on the glass disappear. These are all great observations. So was that a physical change or a chemical reaction? Some of you are saying it's a physical change. Well, what was the physical change? Oh, I hear some people are saying it was the ice. Some of you are saying that it, there was a physical change. You're saying that it was because of the ice, that the ice started to melt. That's a good answer. Some of you are saying it was a chemical change. Hmm. That's interesting. Why did you think that? Ah, so you're saying because there was bubbles. So something must have been happening for the bubbles to pop. Another great, great observation. So what exactly is a physical change? Some people are saying it's when something changes from a solid to a liquid. That's a great answer. Some of you are saying that it's when it changes from a solid to a gas? That's a great answer too. So yes, a physical change is when an object changes its states of matter. And the three states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. A chemical change is different. A chemical change means that something different has happened. 
So to change the state of matter for our ice cube, I'm going to take our ice cube out of our cup. And I'm going to place it onto a plate. And as you can see, the ice cube is there. And we're going to try to melt it. Now we could sit here for a long time and just stare at it and wait for it to melt, but that might not be that much fun. Science is so much fun. So we're gonna have some fun. I'm going to take the ice and I'm going to take what's known as a blowtorch. Some of your family members or may have used this or others that have come to your house or apartment to do some work might have used something like this when they're fixing pipes. So this is not something students use. So in order to be safe, I'm going to put on my safety goggles. Now I want you to watch the blowtorch. I'm gonna depress it. And as, you saw, and as you saw, a flame came out. That's a very, very hot flame. So I'm going to take my ice and I'm going to heat it up. As you can see, the ice cube looks very different than it did before. And on the plate, we have water. So our ice cube has changed its state of matter from a solid to a liquid. That was a physical change. So we just did two different demonstrations. The first one was the soda with the ice. And the second one was taking the ice cube and using a blowtorch and watching the ice cube quickly melt. So some of you had answered that it was a physical change. Some of you answered it was a chemical change. Some of you I heard said both. And the answer is, you're all right. In some cases it was a physical change and in other cases it was a chemical change and they were actually both. So for example, the soda demonstration, we had the ice cube, which was melting with the warmer temperature soda pouring on it. That was a physical change. The ice cube started to melt. The same physical change happened when we heated the ice cube with the blowtorch. The chemical change happened in both cases as well. When we poured the soda into the cup, we saw a bunch of bubbles come up. Those bubbles were releasing of gases, which is actually a chemical change. Some of you caught on that when I was melting the ice cube, there was a chemical change going on as well. You were absolutely correct. The blowtorch is actually uses a gas inside of this yellow container. That gas was sparked by this igniter, which created a flame out the top. That was a chemical change or chemical reaction. So as we can see, sometimes it's not always as simple as something is a physical change or a chemical change, Sometimes parts of it are physical changes and other parts are chemical changes. So we're going to move on to another simple activity, something that you're familiar with. Up until now, we've done various activities that you can definitely do on your home, at home on your own without a responsible adult around because you're just talking about ice and soda um, and putting an ice cube on a plate and watching it melt. However, I would not have you use a propane torch or any kind of heat to, to have ice melt. So that is something that you should definitely do with a responsible adult. For every activity that we're going to do from this point on, 
You're always going to not be able to do it by yourself. You should always have a responsible adult with you. So we're going to look at another potential chemical reaction or a physical change. And we're going to use things that are, once again, very, very common with what you've seen. Here we have a matchstick and here we have a candle. So when somebody has a birthday, they normally put candles in their cake or cupcake or whatever the case may be. And you have to light those candles with a match. So I'm going to put my plate underneath me. So in case it drips, I'm going to put on my safety goggles and I'm going to light my match. So you see the match is lit. So is that a physical change or a chemical change? Sorry, physical, is that a physical change or a chemical reaction? Hmm, my match went out. I'm going to light another one. Only because it's fun. So here's a candle and I'm going to light the candle. Is that a physical change or a chemical reaction? What if I turn it like this? Notice what happens. Can you see that wax melting? So once again, is that a physical change or a chemical reaction? Once again, heard a lot of great answers out there. I heard that the match was a chemical reaction. And you're absolutely right. When something is burning, that is a chemical reaction. We saw smoke coming up. That's a release of a gas. The candle, oh, that was a tricky one. Some people said it was a physical change. Some people said it was a chemical change. And some of you said it was both. Once again, this is both. Why? Because the wax itself is the physical change. The wax, when it dripped, it's still wax. It's right there. You probably can't see it, but it's still wax. However, the wick where the fire was, that's changing. That's going away as it burns. And then you have the flame. The flame itself is a chemical reaction. The wick burning is a chemical reaction. So we have both chemical reaction and physical changes occurring here with the lighting of the candle. The wax going from a solid form into more of a liquid form. And then when it cooled, what did it do? It went back to a solid form. Very good. Our next activity, we're going to use baking soda, which I put into a cup. Baking soda, if you get Arm and Hammer, it looks like this in the store. And then I'm going to use something called apple cider vinegar. Most people have just plain old vinegar, which is clear. I only had apple cider vinegar. Vinegar tends to smell, so I don't really like the smell of it, but this is what I'm gonna use for this activity. I'm going to combine the two, but as you see right now, it doesn't really, there's nothing going on there. I have just two different cups of, of the baking soda and the apple cider vinegar. But we're gonna watch and see what happens when I combine them. So here we have, so here we have the two cups. I'm going to put the apple cider vinegar there and I'm gonna pour into the apple cider vinegar the baking soda. And I want you to watch to see what happens. Whoa. 
That's crazy. So was that a physical change or a chemical reaction? Yes, that was a chemical reaction because once again, we saw a bunch of bubbles come up. That was a release of gas. In today's lesson, we're going to be working with money. So I want to give you kind of break away from science for a minute and give you a little bit of a history on money because all of you are probably used to pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, $1 bill, $5 bill, $10 bill, $20 bill, maybe even a $50 bill. But I wanted to show you how money has changed over time. And I want to show you that even coins and bills have been different dating back 70 years ago, 100 years ago, 150 years ago. The farther back you go back in time, the more money has changed. I have two bills here. One is a $1 bill and the other is a $10 bill. I want you to take note of the coloring, the size, and I'm going to show you some different bills from in the past. And you're going to see how our money has changed over time. Here's a different bill. This one's also a $10 bill, but notice that it's a much different size. It's a lot bigger. You also see that this is from 1922, where the other regular $10 bill is from 2013. You'll see it has different colors. It has gold right here and right here. But really interesting is the words that are written right here. It says $10 in gold coin. So it just goes to show you that money over time has changed. I have another bill, which is even older than that. And this one is from 18... 62. And as you can see here, this is what's called a Virginia Treasury note for $100, what you would consider to be $100. Back then, $100 didn't have the same value as it does today. That's a $2 bill. And as you can see, that is not our normal $1 bill, or $5 bill, or $10 bill. Here's another $2 bill. Notice that even these two $2 bills are very different. The one with the red is from 1928. The one with the green is from 1976. You can see that the pictures of Jefferson are very similar, but yet the numbering for two is very different in size. So here I have an assortment of coins for you to look at. The ones along this part right here, these are all very large in comparison to all of these. These are $1. Each one is worth $1. This one is back in 1921. This one is from 1924. And this one is from 1971. You can kind of see that the faces on each one is slightly different. So it doesn't come out real clear on the video. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. You also will see that when you look at all the coins, these are your 50 cents. These are your 25 cents or your quarters. These are your dimes. These are your nickels. And these are your pennies. Interestingly enough, if you look at this one right here, this one looks very different in terms of the metal that was used. That's called a Lincoln Steel. And that is from 1943. 
that penny was no longer copper like it had been years before because during those years of 1943, that was when World War II was going on and they needed to use all available metals for um, the military, for artillery, as well as um, other things. So the coin, the penny, had changed. If you look here, this one's very different because it has actually an Indian head and that was from 1901. So it just gives you once again an idea that money has changed over time. Okay, I hope you enjoyed all the activities up to this point. We've seen some things bubbling like crazy. We've seen some things melt and drip. Now we're gonna see what happens this time. This time we're gonna work with lemon. I've squeezed some lemons and we're gonna work with salt. I poured some salt into a container. I just used plain old table salt. And we're going to work with some pennies. Now I'm going to focus in on the pennies so you can see the difference between the ones I'm going to use, which are kind of dirty, and ones that are considered clean. So we have four pennies here. This one is pretty bright. It's clean. It's a newer penny. And then these three are, I would say, dirty or darker, older. They've been used a lot more. So we're going to see what happens when we add these pennies to the salt and to the lemon. So we'll start with the salt. And move these pennies up a little. I'm going to keep the, the shiny one there so you can see it. And we can do some comparisons. So I'm going to put this penny into the salt. I'm going to move it around. Let it sit for a minute. And I'm going to do the same thing with the lemon and another penny. Put that in there, move it around, and let that sit for a minute. Now I'm gonna fish out the penny from the salt, and we're gonna see, did it change? No, not really. It looks the same. When I put that penny in the salt, did you see any bubbling like we've seen before or any smoke or anything like that? Yeah, I'm hearing it. No, not at all. It wasn't very exciting. What about when I put the penny in the lemon? Did you see any bubbling or smoking or any kind of reaction at all? No? Okay, well, let's see if it did anything to the penny. Let's try fishing it out. Always easy to put it in. A little harder to get it out. Tilt it. There we go. It's coming. You guys should make a bet on how long it'll take me to get this penny out. It's one thing about science experiments, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> All right, try the old fashioned way. I'll stick my finger in and just grab it. There we go. How does that look? It doesn't really look any different either. I'll move this one out of the way. This was the salt one. That was the lemon one. They both still look the same. And I'll move the clean, fresh one right there. Well, what if 
And that's the thing about science. Science is all about the what ifs. What if I do this? What if I do that? What will happen? You can make predictions. Or we can just put it in and see what happens and then try to figure out why something happened or why something didn't happen. So this time I'm going to combine my salt and my lemon and I'm going to see if there's a big explosion or bubbles or smoke. Ready? And we have nothing. No bubbles. No salt, no uh, smoke, no explosions. Well, let me take one of my pennies. I'll take the salt penny. I'll throw it in there. Move it around a little bit. And give it a minute. And we'll see if anything happens. Do we see are there any bubbles or anything going on there? No. No smoke, nothing. Hmm. Let's see if I can take it out. What? What happened? That looks a bit different than the other one. That got a lot cleaner. So was that a physical change or a chemical reaction when I added the salt and the baking soda together? I'm sorry, the salt and the lemon together. Yeah, that was a chemical reaction. How do you know? Because something new must have been created because the penny got cleaned. Yes, great answers. Because when we tested it in just the salt, nothing happened. The salt did not clean the penny. When we tested it in the lemon by itself, nothing happened. The lemon did not clean the penny. However, as we see, it did clean the penny when it was put in the mixture of the salt and the lemon together. I've done this experiment before, and one of the things I did, because scientists make mistakes sometimes, and I did, I was forgetful. I ended up leaving the penny in the lemon and salt mixture, and I left it in there and there for about two weeks. At the end of two weeks, the penny actually started to no longer be shiny, but started to actually get darker. Now this one's only been in for about four days. You should see what happens if you leave it in longer. Does it make the penny dirty? Does it make it really, really shiny? Or does it do something else to the penny? You have to try and figure it out and let us know. Let your teacher know after you've tried it for a couple weeks and then tell your teacher what happened. So what is a physical change and what is a chemical reaction? To summarize it, a physical change is probably the easiest to remember. And that is when something changes its state of matter, when it changes from a solid to a liquid or to a gas or in any direction. A chemical change is a little more involved. That means that there is a change in color, a formation of a precipitate, which means a liquid or a crystallization, a formation of a gas, which we saw a couple examples of that tonight, a change in the odor, which we didn't really talk about with when any of our experiments, but since I'm the one that's sitting here, I did not smell any changes in odor. 
or a change in temperature. Now, a change in temperature, sometimes you can actually feel the change in temperature, and sometimes you have to use a thermometer to test to see, was there a change in temperature? So I wanna thank everyone for coming out tonight, and I hope you learned something about physical changes and chemical reactions. I hope you work with a responsible adult and try some things on your own, but more importantly, I hope you start to look around outside, inside, everywhere around you and look for examples of physical changes or chemical reactions. Thanks for coming.